Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today we're going to talk about CFA level 2 quants. Uh, topic of discussion is going to be linear regression assumptions. Uh, in the previous topics that we talked about, uh, we talked about the assumption, uh, we talked about what linear regression is, right? We talked about uh, variables such as, uh, sorry about this, uh, we talk about variables such as y equals b naught plus b one x, where we talked about hey, you know what y is the independent uh, y is the dependent variable, and then x is the independent variable, right? Uh, now, right now, what we will try to do right now, let me just remember, move this thing up, right? So right now, what we'll try to do is try to understand in terms of the linear regression, what are the assumptions? This is really going to be the key point, because uh, if you want to go and find um, some kind of relation between two variables, we have to make some assumptions, right? So number one assumption we're going to talk about is that relationship between the dependent and the independent variable is supposed to be linear. So given the equation that we talk about, the x and y axis, uh, you know what? When we have x and y axis, uh, we want to make sure that the relationship is going to be linear, which means that we can actually see that there's going to be some kind of a linear relationship, right? It can be this, can be this, doesn't really matter, it has to be a linear. It's not gonna be something like an exponential, right? Now that is gonna be uh, something you cannot predict, but this one, if it's fairly certain, um, you know what, then you can do some predictions. Uh, number two is gonna be in terms of the independent variables are not random. So when you talk about uh, cross-sectional observations, right? So if you wanna go and find out, hey, you know what, what is, uh, let's say this is gonna be the price of a particular security, uh, maybe it's going to be depending on various variables. For example, it might be based on, say, uh, based on the size of a company, right? Based on maybe the earnings per share, right? Uh, might be based on PE, price to earnings, right? So it might be based on various variables, but what you want to see is there is no relationship between size and earnings or size or, or PE, right? Because that's going to create an issue. I mean, if you have, if this size is related to EPS, uh, then hey, you know what? If the relation, if the correlation between them is one, then all you have to do is just try to find out what size is, and EPS is going to be the same factor, right? So what you really want to do is when you try to do some kind of assumptions, uh, you want to make sure that you know what um, the independent variables are not going to be uh, are not going to be dependent, right? So they have to be independent variables. Uh, this is something which causes an issue in the future. You'll t take a look at it. Uh, this is something called as a multicollinearity, right? Let's just write it down. Now, multicollinearity really means, you know what, uh, the two variables, uh, as I mentioned, maybe the size and the EPS, they are dependent. So, I mean, the easiest way to really do it is say, you know what, if the size and the EPS, if they are, uh, if they have some kind of correlation between them, then the easiest way is just to remove one of them. Right? I mean, if both of them are really going to give you the same answer, uh, why bother having two different variables when one can actually do it, right? So that's what you really don't want to happen is you have various variables where two are in are dependent, right? So the earnings per share and maybe the size, uh, if they are, they have to be independent. If they are dependent, then you can just use one of them, right? Because the other one is going to vary the other. Uh, the other thing that you want to talk about is in terms of the um, the rest of all is going to be based on the uh, the error terms, right? Um, so the common theme on here is going to be error term across the board, right? Now error terms is really going to be you know what? Uh, let's say you know what there is x and y axis, and we go and based on uh, different observations during the time frames, right? Um, we say hey you know what the line of best fit is this, right? So what you really want to see is the expected value. So this is our predicted value, our predicted, right? Or also called as a uh, line of best fit, right? Uh, so this is a predicted value and these are the actual values, right? So these are all actual values. So what you want to see is the expected value of the error term. So the error, where's the error? The error is going to be the difference between this and this, right? This is the actual value. 
and this is a predicted value. This is the actual value. These are all error terms. So the expected value of the error term should be zero. I mean, if, if you're creating some kind of an assumptions uh, or you're trying to create some kind of relationship, I mean, if the expected value of error term is something else, how are you really going to predict, right? I mean, we talk about the relationship y equal b naught plus b1x plus the error term. You want this expected value of this error term to be zero, right? Uh, the next is various of the error term is same across for all our observations, and the error term is uncorrelated across observations. If the error terms start to become uh, correlated, right, then that leads to a situation called. Um, let's try to write it down. That's under something called as a serial correlation. Right, that's something you don't want to happen. Uh, and the next one is in terms of error term is normally distributed. So when you talk about normal distributed, uh, a normal distribution, what is normal distribution? Normal distribution is really, uh, let me just remove all of this. Right. Uh, so what is a normal distribution? A uh, normal distribution is if you try to do um, some kind of, it has to be something like this, right? This is kind of a very ugly one. Let's make a better one. Right, the extremes, right? So this is a normal distribution where there's fat tails and then most of the stuff is forming over here, right? So these are normal distributions. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of assumptions, these are the main six ones. Number one, let's recap the relationship between the dependent and the independent variable is linear, right? So the independent variable is X in this situation and dependent is gonna be Y. The independent variables are not random. So it means you are able to predict the independent variables and there should be no relationship between the independent variables, right? You talked about the PE or the size. So there should be no relation, right? If there is relation, then why bother having different ones? You can just have one. The expected value of the error terms is zero. The variance of the error term is same for all observations. Uh, the error term is uncorrelated. So there is no relationship between the error terms and the error term is normally distributed. Because if it is normally distributed, then we can actually try to figure out what it is and we can actually go and omit it. So guys, if you like the video, uh, please like and subscribe to the video. If any comments, leave a comments down there. Uh, but if you want to make more videos going forward, do, do let me know what topics you would like me to make videos on and I will help you make those videos. Have a good one.